Imagine a world where nothing fits, where pants are too long. The crotches are down to here, the seat's down to here, and the pants are up to there. Where elevators are filled with giants. You kind of get cramped and, you know, it's kind of hard to breathe sometimes. Where driving a car means your feet don't reach the pedals. You have to fumble down here, and some have bars underneath, and some have these little electronic things on the side you have to figure out. And where you can't see the movie screen, let alone find a date to take there. I don't care, hair color, eye color, skin color, they need to be tall. Sorry. Welcome to the world of short men. Ralph Kais, 5'7", wrote a book about height. We just assume anybody we're looking up to is, has power, has power over us. We put Chris and Debbie, colleagues here at ABC News, in front of our camera, posing at different heights. Half the shots showed Chris is the taller of the pair. The air's kind of thin up here. In the other half, Debbie was taller. Then we gave the photos to students at Fairleigh Dickinson University and asked them to tell us a story about what was going on. When Chris was taller, the adjectives used to describe him were mature and respected. When Chris was shorter than Debbie, they called him submissive, childish, weak. Andrea McGinty, who runs a dating service in Chicago, knows all the tricks. We asked her to help us construct an experiment to test just how willing women are to date shorter men. And we found three brave volunteers. Stu is the shortest. How tall are you? I'm five foot and uh, five five with the afro. <laughs> <laughs> Rob is five three. He prefers taller women. I kind of enjoy it. I mean, I think there are some serious advantages to being a little bit, having a woman who's a little bit taller. David is getting married this fall. She is five feet tall. And you are? I am five six. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay. Giant, right. <laughs> <laughs> We recruited other men about the same age as David, Stu, and Rob, but taller. We asked them all to dress in jeans and a sweater, and then we did something cruel. We put them in lineups, five at a time, behind a two-way mirror. The men couldn't see or hear what was going on in the next room. That's where we invited groups of women to look at the men and choose a date. In this case, we wanted to see if anyone would pick 5'3", Rob. When Andrea told us women like doctors, we gave him an MD. Their choice? Andrew. Uh, I would say Matt. No, Rob. We piled on some more assets. We said besides being a doctor, he was also a best-selling author and champion skier who just built his own ski house. Does that affect your choices? He's still short. Then we gave Rob a promotion. We made him chief of staff at a prestigious hospital. Who would you pick him? Andrew's probably the closest to who I'd pick. I'd pick Matt. Jeffrey, the pilot. What would it take? Now we said Rob was also a gourmet cook who loves children. Oh, definitely. I would take him in a minute then. Height, no problem. I wouldn't because I would think I don't want short little kids. <laughs> I was thinking, like, <laughs> well, at least someone liked Rob. But if it was this harsh for him at 5'3", what would it take to get a date for Stu at just five feet? take to get a date for Stu at just five feet. First, we made him an up-and-coming actor. No. <laughs> no. Not. Then we said Stu had made millions by age 25. No. No. Not for me. Nothing worked. How come nobody picks Stu? Stu's too short. Too <laughs> short. <laughs> we asked if there was anything we could add to make Stu irresistible. Maybe the only thing you could say is that the other four are Murderers. Right, are convicted of some crime. Child molesters. Rapers. Psychotic. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then we you would know. say, oh, okay. okay. Hello, Stu. Right. I mean, and nothing bad yeah. towards him. He's got yeah. a nice smile. He's, he's, he's cute. But no takers. So we replaced Stu with David to see if 5'6 made a difference. We brought in one last group of women. When they all picked this fellow, we told them he'd been unemployed for two years, but that our David was a chief surgeon. I guess it would be David. <laughs> for me. Yeah. Yeah. Two took David right away. But Tara chose Jim, whom we'd made a high school gym teacher. Would it change anything if I told you that David, besides being a, a chief surgeon, had just published a book that he was a gourmet cook, loved kids, and extremely wealthy? I'd switch to David real quick. 
I mean, let's be realistic. I'm going to bag the gym teacher now. <laughs> so what's going on here? You had to make those short guys almost like God to make them desirable, right? We finally made them God, and that's when <laughs> <laughs> they chose. And this surprises you? <laughs> it obviously doesn't surprise you. No. Yale psychologist Les Martel is 5'5". Five five. It goes back to caveman times. We simply judge people, particularly men, based on their height, on their size, on their physical presence. Why is that? We asked several of the women to come back and tell us. I feel short men make great best friends because they're very enthusiastic, caring, because they have to make up for their height. But you have no interest in going out with someone shorter than no. you? No. I'm just attracted to taller men. I'm only 5'5 five five myself. But I just, I just like taller men. I have to tell you, and it breaks my heart to tell you this, it turned out that being short was not good. Does that surprise anybody? I don't think so. Absolutely no. not. Tell me what you were thinking while you were standing out there with the taller guys. Sure aren't picking us. <laughs> <laughs> you want to look up into his eyes, and it, you want it to be like a movie. There's a stereotype in society that says when you find your mate, um, the man is bigger and the, the woman is smaller, you know, Tarzan. Jane, and we didn't get to speak, so... Right. Well, you didn't get to speak, but we spoke on your behalf. Oh, thanks. And we made you doctors, chief surgeons, best-selling authors. Stuart, we made you a venture capitalist who made millions by the age of 25. You were a gourmet cook. You loved children. Uh, you had <laughs> ski houses that you built all by yourself. Sometimes all this worked, but most of the time, fellas... Didn't do, it a didn't, darn didn't do a darn thing. thing. <laughs> well, I guess that says something about people. What does it say to you? Maybe the average person isn't giving us the credit that we deserve. Does it bother you? You know what it's, it's like to maybe hurt. I think you know what it's like to, you know, maybe to have more setbacks than taller people. David, you're nodding your head. Sure. Do you think that's oh, true? Yeah. Growing up, you take a lot of uh, abuse. You know, always being the short one and getting picked on and name calling. It happens. What has happened to these three nice guys from the early experiment? A yes. Any any women in their lives? Well, Dave, whom we told you was getting married, has gotten married, so he's that's all fine. Uh, Stu and Rob are still available, however. Hmm. Women of America, tall Take or what? short, they're Take out there. What?